hello. We're going to learn how to do my sandstone painting for the Dwarven Forge Dungeon of Doom pieces. I wasn't going to do a video, but people talked me into it, so here goes. You're going to start out needing to mix some colors. And I have a couple of little tricks for doing so. I like to mix in these little sauce cups and uh, to get accurate measurements you can put one cup inside the other, fill up the inner cup to measured points, and then mark the outer cup with your measurements. That way your measurement cup stays clean and you can switch out your mixing cup. The other important part is having a color card. When you're mixing colors you want to get consistent color. So you need both the recipe and a swatch of the color that you can test your mixed, your new mixed batches to make sure that they match. I just put a little daub of the new mix directly on here, dry it with a uh, heat gun or hair dryer before I start painting and adjust the color as needed. So you're going to start with the first color which is two parts cardboard, two parts stone edge, and one part stucco. And these are all the corny paints that you can get on the Dwarven Forge website. You're going to start out with the dungeon gray piece and do a base coat over it in that first base color. For speed purposes I went ahead and pre-painted this one since you guys know how to paint base colors. Next you're going to mix up some complementary colors just to give your piece a little more interest. And you can do as many different colors as you want. Um, for this test, I just did two different colors. The first one was a straight mix of the olive dry brush. And I just picked out a few stones and a little bit of the front detail here. You can also do this on the castle walls or any of the other dungeon pieces. So I just randomly picked out stones and did the various contrast colors. The second one I went through was three parts base gray, two parts earth stone, and one part cardboard. Mixed up my color, tested it on the card, and made sure that everything matched up. Now there's other elements on this piece that you could also paint to give a little more detail to. Around the outside of the wheel and the back of the freestanding wall section from the Forbidden Temple, there's a ring of rune stones. that I decided to pick out in the darker color. To save time I won't go ahead and paint the whole thing, but you can see that at this point it's not all that attractive. So the next part, and this is the key part, the main reason I'm doing this tutorial is for this next step. You're going to take some brown shoe polish. And for this step, you need to make sure 
that you shake up this bottle um, every single time you start to paint. Otherwise you'll get an inconsistent color. Now these have a foam applicator on the top, but we don't want to use that. If you reach down just past the lid and turn, the whole thing will pop open. And you can easily pour the shoe polish into a container for painting. And then the lid pops right back on. You're going to want a large brush, a nice good size brush so that you can paint very quickly with this because we're going to need to remove the shoe polish after we put it on. So you're also going to need bits of paper towel and Q-tips to get into some of the fine details. Dip the brush into your shoe polish and paint on quickly. You want a nice heavy coat and make sure you're getting it down into all the crevices. Always do one side at a time and get the entire side. Take your paper towel and wipe off any excess. By doing the entire side you get a consistent look for the whole thing and you'll have fewer patchy areas. Repeat that for your next section of wall. Now another thing you're going to want to do is once you've finished your first wall section, keep it next to you. So each time you do another section, you have it to look at and judge to see whether or not you're putting enough or too much on each wall. That will give you a more consistent overall effect. Now with these detailed parts, you've got to make sure you get all the way down into all of those cracks. Now you can leave it with really deep recesses, but if you want a slightly lighter look, take that Q-tip and get into those places where the paper towel isn't reaching. Once you have the shoe polish on, you're going to want to let it dry completely. Before going to the final step. Now if you look at this piece, you're going to see it's kind of shiny. That's an effect of the uh, shoe polish leaves. Now if you don't want your piece, your ancient sandstone to look shiny, take a bit of stone edge dry brush. Make sure your paintbrush is completely dry and doesn't have any polish left in it.
gently shake your paint. And we're just going to dry brush a little of this stone edge. I want really dry, so get a little bit of paint on your brush and then wipe most of it off. So there's very little left on here. Then just lightly go over multiple strokes. If, you, if you're getting really white areas, wipe some more off your brush and then go back in. This will help get rid of most of that shine and if you still have some left and you don't want anything on there you can use a matte or flat clear sealant and that will take out the rest of the bits are, that are shiny. It's also a good idea to have a piece that you've dry brushed to match all subsequent pieces too. So there you go. I will have pictures as well as the color card uh, put up on the website alongside this uh, video. So thanks for watching and good luck.